Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about iSpring Suite, which is a PowerPoint-based toolkit for creating e-learning content. iSpring supports a lot more features like you can create interactive quiz, simulator, and interactions within PowerPoint. Not only that, but iSpring also has a huge content library containing useful assets, templates, and characters to help you create more professional presentations. iSpring supports Windows 7, 8, and 10 with Office 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, 2019, and Office 365. You can request a 30-day free trial from their website. Now let's test it out and see what it has to offer us. After downloading and installing the product, you get an icon on the desktop but if you look into the start menu then you will find that iSpring Suite also offers you many other tools like an audio, video editor, the Cam Pro, which is a full-featured screen recording tool, Flipbook Maker which can convert any of your PDF files, a Word document or PowerPoint presentation into a flipbook. Along with that you also get the Quiz Maker, Talk Master, and Visual Maker. However, each of these tools requires a separate dedicated tutorial but still, we will try to cover most of the iSpring Suite features in this video. When you open iSpring Suite then it offers you to use most of these features right from one place like you can create courses, quizzes, record screen, create interactions, and simulations and if you open PowerPoint, then you will find a new iSpring Suite 10 add-in has been automatically installed and you can also find most of these features under the new tab. Let's begin by creating a new quiz from the insert section of iSpring and you will be asked to save your current presentation. It will then automatically open the quiz maker and you are asked if you want to create a graded quiz or a survey. You can also open your recently created quizzes or can watch the video tutorials to learn more about the quiz maker. Now, let's create a short quiz, and there you have a lot more options in the Home tab to design an interactive quiz. We will begin by adding a question to our quiz by clicking on the question drop-down menu and there you can choose what type of question you want to add like if it is a multiple choice, true, false, numerical, matching, or multiple response question. Depending on what type of question you choose and according to the question you will see the features to configure the settings. Like, if we first go with a multiple choice question and then add the second question of matching, then you can find completely different options to configure both the questions. For multiple choice questions, you can type your question in the text box above. To describe and explain the question in more depth, you can also include a picture or a video, and an audio file to the question. Later, you can configure the properties from the right side pane like you can change or delete the picture or if you want to allow the user to zoom the picture while attempting the quiz. You can instantly see a preview of your quiz by clicking the preview button from the home tab to test everything in real time. The user can then click the image or video to enlarge it or can even play the audio file before he attempts the question. By default, for multiple choice questions, you are given three choices and you can add more options at the bottom and can even add separate images with each of the choices. The important thing here to note is which answer is the correct answer. So, under the choices, on whichever choice you will set the radio button will be assumed as the correct answer to the question. From the feedback and branching section, you can configure the message for correct and incorrect answers, the scores you want to give, and where the quiz should proceed next, either to the next slide or to the next question group. If your quiz contains different types of questions, then you can organize them into different question groups. Like, First we have the multiple choice questions but now if I want to add true and false questions and do not want to mix them with the multiple choice questions, then I can add a new question group from the ribbon and then can start adding true false questions under this group.
From the right side slide options pane, you can also configure how many attempts you want to give, time to answer the questions, and can shuffle the answers each time the quiz is played. From the left side pane, you can easily adjust the positions of questions by just dragging and dropping, or you can right-click to bring the context menu. Then you can remove, make duplicates, or can cut, copy, or paste questions from one group to another. You can also add an info slide to add additional information to the question or about the quiz. Besides that, you can add an intro slide, a user information form, and instruction slide. Asking for the user information could be most important when you want to record the results for each student attempting a quiz. You can add a user login form by clicking on the introduction drop-down menu and choosing user info. Here you can configure the fields you want the user to fill before attempting the quiz like name and email address. You can add more fields at the bottom and set the condition and file types. Once you are done with setting up the user form, the next thing is to configure the reporting options, so the student and the instructor both can receive the quiz results through email. To configure the reporting options, click on the Properties button under the Quiz section and then click Reporting from the left side pane. Here select the option to Send Report to Instructor and type the email address of the instructor. You can also configure to send the report if the quiz is passed or failed or both and include the answers in the report. You can also send a copy of the report to the user's email address that he entered at the beginning of the questionnaire through the user information form. Now, to test the reporting settings, we need to save and return to course and click on the publish button within PowerPoint. We have already created a short PowerPoint quiz and for the time being, let's open it and publish it inside a folder on my computer. After the publishing is complete, click View Course and it will then open the quiz in the browser while asking for the user information in the beginning. Let's finish the quiz to know if it can submit the quiz report to both the user and the teacher. After finishing the quiz, iSpring will automatically send the report to the email addresses and will also display the results on the screen. Now, if we check the emails of both the student and the teacher then we have the results right in the inbox, or you can also check your junk or spam folder. Keep in mind that you cannot use the slideshow feature of PowerPoint to use the quiz instead you must publish the quiz so users may interact with the quiz and answer questions and receive the reports over email. iSpring also helps you to create more attractive and professional presentations through its content library. You can use slide templates to insert different types of professional looking slides into your presentation. The Characters Library gives you hundreds of transparent pictures of both male and females with different actions and emotions and you can easily filter the list from the left side pane. The Content Library also offers you to insert backgrounds, objects, and icons.
In the latest versions of PowerPoint, you have the record tab from where you can record an audio narration or can even insert screen recording or live camera feed using the Cameo feature. But if you are using an older version of PowerPoint and you don't have these features available then the iSpring comes with all these functionalities. Like, you can use the screen recording feature to record an area or an application or full screen along with audio and video using a microphone and camera. Later, you can completely edit your recording using the iSpring Cam Pro to create a professional video for social media like Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. The Cam Pro gives you a timeline with tracks, and you can further add more audio, video, pictures, text, shapes, and transitions into your timeline to make a perfect video. iSpring also lets you create interaction and dialogue simulations. Creating new interactions is easy and it is just like adding new slides into your presentation. You can have a quiz on one slide and can add an interaction or dialogue simulation to another. When you add a new interaction then you are first asked to choose the interaction type like if you want to define steps to accomplish a particular task or want to create a timeline. Then you are given a lot more formatting options in the ribbon to design a professional interaction. When you add dialogue simulation then you get different options in the ribbon. First, you can add a new scene to the simulation and type the message and choose a character picture from the content library. You can also add a reply to the message. You can add more scenes to the simulation and then adjust their position on the board. Click the preview button to see the live dialog simulation and then click save and return to course to have the simulation into your PowerPoint presentation. You can see the preview from the current slide or can see the preview of the selected slide, or the entire presentation. When you are done editing everything then just click the publish button to have everything in one place. Finally, if you are an educator or trainer and want to give iSpring a try then you can download a free version with limited capabilities and the download link has been given in the video description. So, I hope you will find iSpring useful. Let me know your thoughts by liking, sharing, and commenting on this video. Subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thanks for watching and have a great day.